the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, this morning I want to welcome our catechumens and candidates who will be receiving the sacraments of initiation and candidates will be received into full communion with the Catholic Church and uh, I'm glad that you waited uh, faithfully and patiently for this day. Although you had to do this, we were preparing for this great day on the Easter Vigil because of the COVID-19, you we had to postpone. But this turned out to be another beautiful, solemn feast day. There is no greater day or better day than to become full fledged Catholics on the birthday of the Catholic Church, the Feast of Pentecost. So I want to congratulate all of you for having prepared and waited for this day. And I pray for the grace of perseverance for all of you, that you will persevere in the faith you enter into today as full fledged Catholics. Let's all pray for that. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. 
and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. There appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Alamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretan and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though, it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews, or Greeks, slaves, or free persons, and we are all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. 
The Lord be with you. And A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost. You know the word Pentecost comes from the Greek word which means 50. For us it means the day that comes 50 days after Easter. The day on which the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles as promised by Christ. We have in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles the description of the spectacular events that happened on that day. Before that day, the disciples of Jesus were a collection of confused people holed up in a locked room, frightened and not knowing what to do. On Pentecost, the doors were opened and they were received the Holy Spirit in a drama of wind and flame and they were swiftly transformed into a group of people unified by mission and purpose and they became confident and courageous to go out and preach about Jesus and his gospel with eloquence and as a result of Peter's preaching that day thousands were converted and believed in Jesus on that day, a community of believers reconciled to God in Jesus Christ was formed through the working of the Holy Spirit. In other words, church was born that day. That's why we consider this day as the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit who descended upon the disciples on that day continues to dwell in the church and in all, in all the individuals baptized until the end of time. So today is a celebration of Jesus' gift of the Holy Spirit to the church and to each of the baptized. And today we rejoice that that gift of the Holy Spirit is going to be received by our catechumens and candidates today in a special way. You know, sometimes we look for the Holy Spirit only in grand historical events, in, life, in the lives of popes or uh, in the works of the ecumenical councils and such great moments in the life of the church and overlook the daily presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. I think today we should remember we each receive the Holy Spirit in baptism and confirmation and to enable us to live a courageous Christian life. That Holy Spirit within us brings us the courage to withstand the negative influences of our culture. That Holy Spirit 
within us brings us wisdom to look past so much of the foolishness and short-sightedness that surround us. That Holy Spirit brings us knowledge to apply the Gospels to our daily life. And again the Holy Spirit brings us understanding to comprehend the deep truths of Christ. So it is the Holy Spirit who helps us to open our hearts in prayer, to reach out to others in need and to make wise choices in difficult situations. So these are ordinary gifts of the Holy Spirit that enable us to live as true Christians. We should appreciate these great interior gifts planted in our soul by the risen Lord. So whatever happens in our life, whatever roads we may travel, the Holy Spirit is always present in us. As conscience, maybe as repentance, or as the moral compass, inner moral compass, as an urge to pray, as the desire to forgive, as a concern for others' suffering, as an outrage against injustice, at the same time an invitation to peace and reconciliation. So, we take these gifts of Holy Spirit perhaps of granted, but they don't receive the attention of the extraordinary gifts like the gifts of tongue or miraculous healings and things like that. But we can't live without daylight, although we can live without fireworks in the same way. It is as essential as daylight, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for us. St. Paul calls these gifts the greater gifts because through them the Holy Spirit brings order, balance and health to our souls. So the Holy Spirit really is, as we say in the creed, every time we recite the creed, the Lord and the giver of life to the church and to our souls. So today let us give thanks to the Lord for this amazing gift and let us promise to be always open to and uh, responsive to the Spirit at work in us. Now, as a sanctifying God, the Holy Spirit makes us holy through the sacraments. Through the sacrament of baptism, He makes us children of God and heirs of heaven. Through confirmation, He makes us temples of God and warriors and defenders of the faith. The sacrament of reconciliation. He enables us to reconcile, to be reconciled with God by pardoning our sins. That power to forgive uh, was given by Jesus uh, uh, when he gave the Holy Spirit to the apostles, as we heard in the Gospel today. And through the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, he gives us spiritual nourishment by converting the bread and wine into Jesus body and blood. At Mass, every time of the epic places, the time of during the Mass, we pray the Holy Spirit come upon the gifts of bread and wine and transform them into the body and blood of Christ. Jesus, Holy Spirit is active in every Mass at work. So, let us be grateful for the work of the Holy Spirit through all these sacraments that strengthens us in holiness. Let's be grateful for His saving and sanctifying presence in us and among us to strengthen us, to nourish us all the time. So let us pray for His daily anointing so that we might fight against all temptations, all evil tendencies and habits and remain holy throughout our life. So on this Feast of Pentecost, it is quite appropriate that our catechumens and candidates are going to receive these sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, Holy Eucharist. So we also receive some of candidates in the full communion into the Catholic Church, they will be confirmed and receive Holy Communion for the first time. 
So they're all going to share through the Holy Communion the new life Jesus Christ won for us by his death and resurrection. Let us uh, pray for all of them that they will be touched today by Jesus' real presence and will be reunited with the risen Lord in a special way. I congratulate all of them on this joyous occasion and uh, welcome all of you into our St. Catherine's Parish community and ex I extend my prayerful best wishes to all of you for a fruitful life and ministry in the church with joy. And I thank Vincent Rally and the RCI team and the sponsors for all the hard work they did in preparing them for this day and supporting them in their journey. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these our brothers and sisters in their blessed code, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful back. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael. promises 
as we renew those same promises that were made at our own baptism, our response will be, I do. But I will ask the elect to respond first loudly and clearly, to ask the assembly to echo the response of the elect. And so I ask, do you renounce Satan? Uh, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. Do you reject Satan, the author of and prince of sin? I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord.
Juliana, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have been enlightened by Christ, walk always as children of the light, and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet Him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Receive the light of Christ.
by the uh, continuation of confirmation. By your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now, you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, that is today, and given by them and their successors to the Baptist, the promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them to his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may extinguish your candles. Isabel, be seen with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, God. Thank you. 
back to the assembly so that we together will join the universe of prayer. And in our online local prayers, and for those who recalled now. 